Oh, hey, Jimmy. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? How you doing? Everything's good in quarantine, you know. Yeah. How about you? I'm just doing whatever you're doing, you know. Well, I'm about to get my 14th snack of the day. <laughs> Relatable. Hey, everybody. How are you holding up? Uh, for me, uh, it's a bit like this. Oh. I tweeted that joke and it somehow made it to the front page of Reddit, except they cut out the part where I actually made the joke. So it just looks like I made an emo tweet of my sad face. So that's great. On a related note, I wanna do a video where I react to your submissions. So if there's something that you want me to see, submit it to uh, my subreddit, r slash unnamed fan base, or you can DM me on Instagram at Jarvis. Anyway, that was a roundabout way of saying that I hope you're doing well. Um, it turns out that self-isolation is not fun. I've personally found it difficult to motivate myself because every day seems like Groundhog Day. Uh, if Groundhog Day was a movie where Bill Murray wakes up every morning to a global pandemic. All things considered though, I don't have it too bad. Uh, I have a job that allows me to work from home and uh, I'm able to keep in contact digitally with uh, friends and loved ones. Um, some of them are on a stick. <laughs> Heart goes out to all the healthcare workers, grocery workers, and other essential workers who are out there risking their lives for our safety. Um, you could call them heroes, if you ask me. Go ahead. But who I'm really worried about in these difficult times is our nation's true heroes, celebrities. Celebrities are the foundation of our society, and they're some of the hardest hit by this crisis, because now um, they just have to be like regular people. And that's tough. For example, Tom Brady, who is a big fancy football man, had to relocate from his New England mansion to a Florida mansion um, because he got a shiny new millionaire football job. The problem is that his Florida mansion is too close to the beach. What? Gross. He said that he could see people from his backyard. The f Speaking of the common folk, Justin Bieber tried to empathize with them uh, on an IG live call with Kendall Jenner, um, but he says that he can't feel too bad because he worked for what he has. We can't feel bad for, you know, the things that we have. Which is true. Justin Bieber shouldn't have to stand in line at the grocery store. He made baby. Now some people, and I don't know who, took issue with this, so Justin had to apologize. But don't worry, billionaire Puff Daddy Diddy uh, came to Justin's rescue and assured him that the Lord speaks through him. Those are great words. I, I feel when I'm listening to you, because I've known you for such a long time, and I, I feel the Lord speaking through you when you Thank speak you. nowadays. Thank you. It, because you know what they say about Jesus? He got that yummy yummy. And as if things couldn't get any worse, uh, Vanessa Hudgens of High School Musical and other things, I presume, can't go to Coachella this year. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty rough, guys. So they're forced to do what the rest of us do, which is post on social media from our giant mansions. Wait, um, so I thought it would be fun to see how celebrities are coping in the end times. A quick disclaimer, by the way, obviously I'm being a bit facetious. I, I, I know that even celebrities are having a tough time, especially, you know, worrying about the safety of friends and family. But I do think the current situation offers a unique perspective on fame. Um, so, yeah. I've split up the celebrities into two categories. Uh, you've got uh, celebrities who would rather be working right now, but can't. This includes Gal Gadot's uh, very strange Imagine video, which, uh, fun fact, was posted 150 years ago. Time flies. Oh, uh, Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas have completed some Harry Potter Lego sets. So, uh, that's, yep, that's the whole, that's the whole TikTok. Good job, guys. What else? Um, Vanessa Hudgens can't go to Coachella. Still processing that. Uh, but she also posted uh, some TikToks with her fellow high school musical alumni where they danced to We're All In This Together, just like old times. Uh, well, Vanessa didn't dance. She just, uh, she just drank wine. But that's cool too. And on the other hand, you have celebrities, many of which have daily television shows, who've decided to try working from home. But can they recreate television magic remotely in their house <laughs> alone with no studio equipment or crew? Kinda. <laughs> the results are mixed. Uh, okay, so this Imagine video. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us have already seen it, but in case you haven't, Gal Gadot called on a bunch of her famous friends to sing John Lennon's song, Imagine. And some of them said yes. <laughs> 
it's bad. Much has already been said about the singing in this video and the celebrities in this video, but uh, did you know there are other parts? I didn't, and now that I do, it's worse. Day six in uh, self-quarantine. This was on day six? You don't even have time to be crazy yet. The quarantine just started. It hasn't even been a week. You know this was a long time ago because they're still counting the quarantine in days. I couldn't tell you how many weeks it's been, let alone what day it is. I predict a month. What even is today? Babe, what is today? Saturday. I couldn't have told you that. I gotta say that um, these Past few days uh, got me feeling a bit philosophical. It's been six days and you're already feeling philosophical? <laughs> well, uh, fasten your invisible seatbelt, Wonder Woman. Things are about to get straight up Socratic. By the way, I don't think the song Imagine really applies to the current situation. Uh, we're not at war, unless you count the war against the virus. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, we're all in this together. Now that's a sentiment I can get behind. Um, and I saw, I ran into this video of this Italian guy playing the trumpet. Um, Where's this going? In his balcony uh, to all the other people who were locked inside their homes. And he was playing Imagine and there was something so powerful and pure um, about this video. If you ran into something that was so powerful, uh, impart that upon us, please. Don't do a bad impression of it. Like, if I loved the Academy Award winning Korean language film Parasite, I'm not gonna go get a bunch of my <laughs> American celebrity friends to recreate it. They're, they're doing it, aren't they? I mean, it's upsetting and true. Reading the subtitles is too hard. Speak American. <laughs> and he was playing Imagine and there was something so powerful and pure. Hang on, uh, a man in virus-stricken Italy played his trumpet to entertain people during a nationwide lockdown and your takeaway was the song choice? <laughs> the touching part is that he's playing it to make people feel better. <laughs> I don't think this would have been any less heartwarming if he played sexy back. Uh... And it, it goes like this. We know how Imagine goes. It's one of the most famous songs of all time. Just say you want to sing it. Don't try to fucking trick us with your ums and ahs. Like this is an uh, improvised video. Y you're about to include 30 celebrities. No one's going to assume you made this up on the spot. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Okay, so she doesn't even try to explain what's about to happen. All that intro for her to just cut to Kristen Wiig for no reason. <laughs> you coordinated dozens of the most famous celebrities on the planet. The least you could do is tighten up the intro a little bit. Uh... So this is dumb, obviously. Most of the backlash that it's gotten is due to it being tone deaf, both musically and socially. Um... It's too tone deaf. It actually is quite moving to listen to the original video of the trumpet player, but none of the reasons that it's good made it into the celebrity video. For starters, uh, this guy is a excellent trumpet player and most of these celebrities are not musical celebrities. Yeah. Also, the reason it's inspirational is because he's not doing this for attention. He's trying to cheer up the community that he's a part of. Like if my neighbor uh, went outside and started singing Imagine, well, it would be a bit pitchy, sorry, Dan, but I'd be moved. Anyway, I like Gal Gadot. Wonder Woman was good. So this Imagine video teaches us that celebrities can be tone deaf, but did you also know that they can be annoying when they aren't? When you put cheese on your boyfriend's pasta. Kristen Chenoweth is a singer and actress. She's been in Wicked on Broadway. Uh, she's been in movies. Now she's on TikTok and she's armed with exactly one joke. When you put cheese on your boyfriend's pasta. You see, the joke is that she sings a high note. Get it? I don't. And it just keeps happening. <laughs> but at least Kristen Chenoweth is attempting to entertain. Sometimes we don't even get that. Sometimes celebrities are bored and they just wanna share that feeling with the rest of us. Which brings me back to Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas, the second most powerful couple in House Jonas. <laughs> um, for those who are curious, the sigil of House Jonas is a promise ring that's burning up. <laughs> Now that's what I call an SOS. I'm a sucker for a good pun. Ah, pun alert. The pun police are here. I'm about to be punished. <laughs> My favorite thing about them is that on their TikTok, they'll just post 
these TikToks of their completed Lego sets, all of which are seemingly uh, Harry Potter Lego sets, and they add no additional context whatsoever. Just like, hey internet, we did a Lego, now take care. And they've recently taken to IG Live to do some cooking. Okay, one tablespoon. That's a good amount. One tablespoon. Wait, where are you reading that? More like dinner is coming. So uh, there's a lot more where that came from. Jack Black, who we like, did a dance. That was fun. Jake Gyllenhaal took his shirt off, not sure why. And Matthew McConaughey wanted to set us at ease, uh, but the look in his eyes has me scared for my life. He wants us to count on him in the war against the Rona. It's an enemy that we all agree we were gonna be. Now, transition to TV. Television production is still happening, which is cool and commendable actually, because there's a lot of non-famous people who work in entertainment that uh, benefit from having a stable job right now. But in some cases, I'm not sure the hosts of these shows want to be doing them. You're very fun people. When I asked on Twitter at Jarvis, always be plugging, who some of the worst celebrities during quarantine were, a lot of you said Ellen, which is weird. Like, why is everyone watching Ellen? And then I realized it was probably because she uh, compared the lockdown uh, to being in jail um, as a part of a larger joke that I can't tell on YouTube while inside of her giant mansion. And now there's these reports that some of Ellen's employees are upset uh, and worried about their pay because she hired like another company to film her show during quarantine. So like, whoa, okay, I guess Ellen sucks. But also her show is really boring, so. Let's just skip it. I will say that I tried to make it through a few clips, but I couldn't ignore the producer who's just standing outside of her glass house like a serial killer. So I figured I'd focus on a world I know a lot more about. Late night comedy, AKA the kings of YouTube's trending page, AKA the Jimmies. I know some of these people aren't technically named Jimmy, but yes, they are. I watch late night comedy for the majority of my life and I have a soft spot for the form and a lot of the hosts. There's not really anyone I hate, uh, but I definitely have my favorites. And um, there's been a lot of criticism levied at late night comedy for good reason. In fact, that's exactly what I'll be doing right now. First, I just assumed all of these shows were gonna go on hiatus. Um, that is until I saw this episode of John Oliver from what appears to be the afterlife. Other than the fact that there was silence where there would normally be laughter, which makes it a little weird, I found him to be a pretty present and engaging host despite this. And I've watched pretty much every episode that's come out since the uh, quarantine. The next quarantine Jimmy I saw was Seth Meyers who released an episode of his a closer look segment from the most echoey room in the world. Hello everyone and welcome to Late Night. If there's one thing I've learned from this pandemic, it's uh, ironically, no one on TV has a good camera. Like, come on, the dude from the Tiger King after show is calling memes maymays. The memes or memes or whatever they're called. And he has better production quality than NBC. All that being said, I love Seth Meyers and he's a very good boy. Plus he's probably gotten better equipment by now. Well. No, it's still not good, but I love you, Seth. The Daily Show's Trevor Noah, no relation, seems to have a pretty good camera. Uh, he can be seen here talking to excellent comedian Jabuka Young-White, also no relation. In an interesting twist, instead of uh, obviously reading from cue cards like a lot of the other hosts, he's adopted more of a fun youtube -y editing style. Yeah, this is gonna be like, hey, Mr. Doctor, did you get that Lego mask we sent you? Yeah, I did, but I built a helicopter. Celebrities are just like us. Well, me. Celebrities are just like me. Anyway, all of these quarantine late night shows have a similar structure. Everyone is at home. Uh, everyone is incorporating their family. Many are having their kids draw the title cards of their show. Um, because even in a pandemic, all of late night is the same. I wish I had time to cover Conan, Colbert, uh, and even Kimmel. Um, and I guess James Corden is even technically named Jimmy, <laughs> if you think about it. But Sorry, James, my hands are tied. Because what I really wanna talk about is the king of late night, the Fallon of House Jimmy. First of his name, I presume, uh, Khaleesi of the party game, breaker of jokes, father of Justin Timberlake. It's, it's Jimmy Fallon, did you get it? Also, two Game of Thrones jokes, what is this, 2019? I do miss 2019, it was nice. There was outside. Jimmy Fallon gets a lot of shit, but uh, having watched him on SNL and um, his late night show before he took over the Tonight Show, I was a fan. I wasn't that into the party games. Um, and I, you know, 
he could use some work on his interview skills. But I never thought his laugh was fake. And, and that's how you know I'm a real fan. In preparation for this video, I watched some of the at-home edition of The Tonight Show, and it's something else. It seems like every late night host has found a way to adapt their show to the at-home context, except Jimmy. This first clip is from the intro to the show, so it's the first thing you see. Jimmy opens it up with his adorable daughters, uh, and it seems <laughs> like it should be charming, but it isn't. <laughs> Are you focused? Yeah. His kids look like this is take 5,000. He's clearly using them for content. Are you happy? Yeah. Mm, mm, <laughs> I, I don't buy it. And yeah, his daughters are cute, but not against their will. You look like you're serious. Oh, I didn't I see hope. your face. I what? I know, but but you know what? what? I'm pretending to because just what was that? Oh, right. Your child isn't a performer and she doesn't know how to project. So I guess we, the audience, will assume she said something interesting because why would you edit that out? It's not like this is entertainment. Uh, hey guys, we have a great show tonight. Uh, a surprise from Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig. Am I intruding on something? This is so low energy. Uh, also, we have Dua Lipa, who's album Future, Future Nostalgia. A lot of this is a single take because normally the show isn't heavily edited, but man, it just feels so rambly. And um, what else do we have? What else, what else? Is this a stand-up set? <laughs> They're definitely cutting stuff out because they flashed the screen white to draw attention to the editing, but they don't edit it in a way that makes it any more compelling. Okay, now we're back and his kids are even more miserable. This is the perfect visual representation of what it feels like to watch this show. The kids aren't even smiling in the thumbnail. <laughs> I get it, it's hard to turn it on when there's like a lot of sorrow and grief in the world, but uh, maybe don't. Turn it on. Maybe the show is just such a big operation that it's impossible to stop, but uh, it's kind of sad because clearly Jimmy doesn't want to be here. And her charity is. Can you that one? Are you focused again? Mm -hmm. Oh no. I feel like she's getting in trouble after this and I don't like it. UNICEF. Dot org. We love Dua Lipa. This isn't fun to watch. I don't feel like I'm escaping from reality right now. Let's go to some, uh, some monologue jokes right now. Here we go. Thank God, some monologue jokes. That ought to lighten the mood. <laughs> that could have been uh, tighter. Maybe just start the clip with him talking because I did not need this this single second of Jimmy Fallon awkwardly smiling. Who's editing these videos? Jimmy Fallon's kids? Yeah. Tonight marked the start of Passover. It's a holiday that celebrates the miracles of Moses, like parting the Red Sea and finding toilet paper at Target. Hey, Jimmy, sell the joke, my man. He just deflates at the punchline. Does he not know that the punchline is the funny part? But hey, maybe it's a taste thing. I love when jokes are optimized for speed. Yeah, that's a big week with Passover starting tonight and Easter on Sunday. If your family celebrates both, be sure to pick up a pack of the all new Gewelte Fish Peeps. Oh God, this hurts. Jimmy, you can just tell us if you're having a bad time. Blink twice if you're in trouble. By the way, we are two minutes into this video. Let's look at the comments. Jimmy is extremely likable in this format. He is? This should be great. Opera singer Andrea Bocelli is going to perform live on Easter. Uh, hang on. Do you really think this should be great? You a big Bocelli head? This should be great. Opera singer Andrea Bocelli is going to perform live on Easter from an empty cathedral in Italy or his living room if he changes the background on his Zoom. Let's watch that again, but pay close attention to the time after the punchline and before the start of the next joke. That space is where dreams die. Background on a Zoom. I know what you're thinking. Yes, that is a giant slide uh, behind Jimmy Fallon because nothing says I'm not having fun than being next to a giant slide. So uh, they tweeted this next joke and it's how, I think someone sent it to me on Instagram, but it's how I ended up watching this, this whole thing. But when I saw this clip out of context, I thought to myself, this is the saddest monologue joke of all time. So the Panera is launching Panera Grocery, where they're now selling basic grocery store items. And this is cool. <laughs> this is gotta be fun, he loves it. <laughs> it's not even that funny, I don't know why I'm laughing. Sometimes you just need a joke to make you laugh. That's the most, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard Jimmy Fallon say. <laughs> Jimmy! I saw that Panera is launching Panera Grocery where they're now selling basic grocery store items. <laughs> okay, he's back. <laughs> After a brief peek into the darkness, our affable king has returned. And this is cool at the checkout. <laughs> This is an emotional roller coaster. 
<laughs> I feel so manipulated. This joke better be good now. There's been way too much buildup. This is cool. At the checkout, they put all your items in a bread bowl. <laughs> That's what we were building up to? This is cool. At the checkout, they put all your items in a bread bowl. Oh, Jimmy, I think he broke. Wait, let's look at these items. Uh, someone has clearly photoshopped Clorox wipes into super clean wipes. And that's a paper towel roll. The perspective is really tripping me out here because that's either a very tiny roll of paper towels or a giant bread bowl. I think I get it now. Bread bowls are hilarious. <laughs> Uh, it's not over. <laughs> it's, he's still going. Remember we had uh, chowder in a bread bowl or something in Boston. Oh yeah, the airport. Big, the airport. Remember bread bowl in airport? <laughs> <laughs> I miss bread bowl. <laughs> oh, sometimes you just need a joke to make you laugh. That's our monologue, everybody. That's a monologue, everybody. He's so happy to be done. <laughs> Just look at him. All right, Jimmy, uh, kudos for powering through, I guess. Luckily, it's not all bad. Uh, some celebrities I've enjoyed are John Krasinski in his videos. What a cutie. Camille Nagiani and Emily V. Gordon, who I absolutely adore, have a podcast called Staying In that can keep you company and help you cope with living in isolation. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Cardi B, who is frankly going off right now. Government, let me tell you I'm on Coronavirus. As for the celebrities that I've roasted in this video, I appreciate that they're trying to entertain the masses, but some of them are just not good at doing that alone. They might need help from other creatives in those departments, which is fine. Like for example, this uh, Jimmy Fallon talking to a mirror bit where he's never looking in the right place. <laughs> Not even once. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? How you doing? Which, uh, not to toot my own Italian trumpet, is something that uh, is so cool about uh, internet creators because we've had to self-produce this entire time. And it's interesting to see traditional media playing our game. But it's okay if like none of us are at our best right now because this is like, I don't know, exceptional times. I actually think this is encouraging because we don't always see such a humanizing view of celebrity. Like the glitz and the glam obscures their innate human fallibility and, uh, and then they're held up on a pedestal when in reality, say it with me now, celebrities are just like us. Kind of. And that's the video, everybody. Thanks to Barbara Negrau for sending me a message on Instagram and uh, sending me the Jimmy Fallon tweet. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to picture your name, send me a message on Instagram and I might, you know, I might. I am coming to you live from my living room because all the power is out in my house except for one outlet and I don't know why. So uh, I'm gonna now try to upload this video with my phone.